However, if you look very carefully at that very outside white line right near the gravel, and there's a little bit of green there too, that's actually completely flat. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey, and welcome back to another video in the series, A Lap Around. This time we'll be doing a lap around Monza for this weekend's Italian Grand Prix. Now Monza is just a brilliant circuit. It's one of the oldest circuits on the F1 calendar, and it's known as the Temple of Speed because this is the highest speed F1 cars will hit throughout the entire season at well over 200 miles an hour. Matter of fact, last year some cars hit even over 230 miles an hour. Crazy. Monza is also another favorite track of mine because you got some really hard braking zones, some fast turns, some slow turns, a good mix, and it's a track you just, when you get a lap right here, it feels amazing. And because it's Ferrari's home race, you have the Tifosi, so the atmosphere at the track is incredible as well. All the good factors you want on a racetrack. All right, let's get into this video. All right, so here we are on the front straightaway. To our right, you can see the podium. It's cool as it floats above the racetrack, so you can see the Tifosi celebrating below. Some really cool angles from that podium. By far my favorite podium in the entire F1 calendar. So this is the front straightaway at Monza. It's very long, and because you're flat out from the high-speed Parabolica, the last turn, you're carrying a lot of speed here. Big thing, obviously, stay to the left, and most importantly, if you have a car in front of you, get in that slipstream, because you can gain a ton of speed. Now we're coming up to our first braking zone. So the first braking zone is just before the 100 meter board in a Formula One car. And you'll see there's a little bit of rubber on the ground. You see those little stripes? That's the rubber, it's very grippy, you wanna brake there. The thing about Monza you have to remember is because you're running a low downforce setup, you're not gonna have as much grip under braking. So you really have to be precise about your braking points. This is the turn one chicane, probably the best spot to overtake because it is the hardest braking zone on the entire Formula One calendar. You go all the way from your top speed to just over 50 miles an hour. So a lot of deceleration here. Now for overtaking here, there's two great options. You can either do the traditional route of outbreaking someone and going down the inside, works great. Let's say you're further back from the slipstream and you can't go side by side through the turn. You can start to outbreak them. And then once you get side by side behind the apex, you go around the outside of turn one and then you're on the inside for turn two. So let's show the corners now. So this is turn one, it's a 90 degree right-hander, and it's pretty simple. Or this curb that looks like the Italian flag, you run completely over it. It's one of those vibrating, not entirely flat curbs, but flat enough. And obviously that orange sausage curb, don't want to hit that. So you run over that. And then the second one, turn two, you actually have to use a lot of steering angle here. It's a bit surprising, but again, you can run over the Italian curb, don't hit the sausage curb. Then here's the surprising part about this turn. When you're exiting, you don't want to use that curb on the right. It looks flat and it is decently flat, but it's bumpy enough where on acceleration, it slows you down a little bit. So the trick here for exiting is go as wide as possible and just barely touch it. You don't want to go completely over it because it's a little bumpy. Obviously you don't want to go in the gravel either. So just stay on the white line and that's fine. And just make sure your steering wheel is straight so you have no steering scrub. The so turn three is a very nice, long right hand turn. It's easy flat out with the downforce these cars have and you're flat out. Again, you're gonna hit over 200 miles an hour here as well. And what you wanna do is just stay to the inside, don't hit the curb, and then gradually start releasing the wheel so you have less steering scrub, less friction, you'll gain more speed. We're talking a couple miles an hour here, but on a track like this, that can be a couple tenths. We're coming up to the next chicane and it's not great for overtaking because it's narrower than you think, but you can start to set up moves for the straightaways coming up. So this is, again, it's a hard braking zone, but not as hard as the first turn. This would be a second gear corner, maybe third gear. And again, you could run over the Italian curb here. It's even flatter than the one at the first chicane. Don't hit those sausage curbs. Then keep the wheel to the left, and you really have to make sure the car is stable at low speed. If you have any understeer, you carry too much speed here, you'll be off and you'll get a bad exit. And then the second one, again, no sausage curb, fully over the Italian curb. Now exiting this corner is very tricky as well. So this curb on the exit is bumpy like the exit of the first chicane. However, if you look very carefully at that very outside white line right near the gravel, and there's a little bit of green there too, that's actually completely flat. So you put a wheel on there, the car will kind of hop up a little bit, but you'll accelerate very smoothly. Again, you can gain about a tenth there. And if you can do it right, just getting it right near the gravel, as you can see, the car is now not bumping around a ton. Whereas if I move the wheel slightly to the right, you can see it bumping. You can get a really nice exit. Next, we're now into the trees. Mons is actually a little park, which is pretty cool. And we're coming up to the Lesmos. The Lesmos is actually a set of two turns. 
and this is Lesmo 1. Set your brake bias a little rearwards because you want to make sure you get the rear rotated easily. And you have to make sure your front tires have plenty of grip because you are carrying a lot of speed through here and it's all mechanical grip. So it's slightly banked, not much, but again, you just turn in, don't hit that apex curb, but you have to be smooth and committed with your steering inputs here. Then on your exit, you can use all of this curb all the way out to the green. It's pretty flat and the big thing is you're carrying as much speed as possible. Second Lesmo, this is one of the most important corners because you have another long straightaway in a DRS zone, so you have to get your exit right here. So the big thing is carrying your speed. You slow down a little bit, don't hit the apex curb, but get very close. And then on the exit here, you can use all the curb. And you can see there's quite a bit to work with. So you can definitely perfect your exit how you want. Get on the DRS here. And now we're flat out. There's a slight left-hand kink, but it's no big deal. You just tiny bit of steering to the left. Go a little bit downhill because we're actually going to go under the old banking from the old Monza circuit where they used to run this crazy, crazy banking. Now we're coming up to the Ascari chicane. This is where Alberto Ascari, the first Ferrari world champion in Formula One, was killed while testing here. And this corner is just amazing, especially in a Formula One car with the downforce you have. You're going to be braking decently hard but it's a mid speed and then it becomes a high speed corner so it's all about accelerating through here this first curve you can really pound but again you have to be careful these aren't like sausage curbs they're speed bumps that's literally what they are they are rubber speed bumps so if you go over that your car is going to be upset like crazy you're going to be fighting the car the italian curbs here a bit like an american track they're not flat but you can go over them the big thing here is just make sure you don't scrape on the bottom because Formula One cars, as you know, they sit pretty low to the ground. So the big thing is just straight line it and you want to stay towards the left side of the track here. And then one of the important details is you want to look at this inside curb. You'll notice it's pretty flat here, pretty flat here. And all of a sudden, look, it changes. Now it's round. On this round bit, do not hit it or you'll go off just like Max Verstappen did last year and just like Mick Schumacher did last year. Now the reason drivers will make mistakes here is you're trying to get as much speed as possible to exit for the upcoming straightaway. So ideally, from here, you are flat out. Once you hit that first apex back there, you are completely flat out, but you have to be committed with your steering inputs. Through here, you can keep the steering pretty straight. And again, this second curb, it's not as bad as the first one. You can go straight over it, but again, don't hit that speed bump. Those are nasty. Now the exit curb here is very nice. It's completely flat. And not only do you have the little bit of AstroTurf runoff that's decently grippy, you have cement as well if you go a little further. So you can carry a lot of speed here. You just have to fully commit. And if you can do it right, you can find about half a tenth, maybe a tenth there as well. The thing about Monza is because of these long straightaways, it's all about prioritizing the exit and finding little bits of time. So sometimes you got to sacrifice speed. Sometimes you got to add a little bit of speed. This back straightaway here runs parallel with the old oval circuit. It's not a DRS zone, interestingly enough. Because of the Ascari chicane, you're still carrying a lot of speed, so you don't really need DRS. And now we're coming up to the final turn, a very tricky turn, the Parabolica. The Parabolica is the turn where Wolfgang von Trips and Jochen Rimp were killed. This turn is very tricky to get right and quite dangerous as well. Charles Leclerc had a big crash here last year during the race, you might remember as well. So you're gonna be braking right before the 100 meter board back there, and you're gonna be going down into fifth or fourth gear, depending on tire management. This is a corner where you either wanna carry a lot of speed or be careful with your tires. So you're gonna turn in, stay about mid-track, and then you're just gonna start gradually releasing the wheel. Now the thing about the Parabolica is it's all cement runoff here, so if you go wide, it's not the end of the world. However, this green painted bit is a little dusty. You can see there's marbles, and because there's that little bit of a storm drain, it's not entirely grippy. So if you do go off here, you just have to make sure that your steering is either no steering at all, or very, very little and you're releasing the wheel. If you're trying to add steering and slow the car down on this green, forget it. It's just gonna be tricky. So the big thing here is you don't wanna get docked for track limits. G generally, just keep your right sides on the regular tarmac. Your left sides can be on the green entirely and you should be fine. And then exiting here, this is one thing you have to be careful if you do go wide from carrying too much speed. This speed bump is beyond dangerous. As a matter of fact, they've actually removed it. You might remember in 2019, Alex Peroni, the F3 driver, went over this curb, his car launched all the way onto the catch fence. And so if you go over that, that's not gonna be good. So again, don't go wide there, you won't have a problem. So from here, you're gonna point the car to the very, very, very end of this exit curb. It's a bumpy exit curb, but because you're carrying so much speed, 
it's a question of do you go over the bump or you use a little bit more steering. And in this case, it's better to go over the bump than use steering scrub, a steering scrub will slow you down. So you aim for the end of it, you're gonna hit it for a little bit, and then you're gonna have the car point it in a straight line. Now, we're officially done with all the corners, but I like to consider this last area right before the pit entrance, another corner. Because if you have the car pointed in a straight line correctly, meaning you use the minimal amount of steering you want to use, you'll see you actually hit sort of an apex with this white line. Technically there's a right hand kink, but again, when you point the car straight, that corner should disappear for you. And then all of a sudden, we're back at the finish line. And from the apex at the Parabolica, almost halfway through, you're flat out all the way to the chicane. So it's a very long run, but it's a ton of fun. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a hot lap so you can see what Monza looks like at full speed. All right, so there you go. Again, not a perfect lap, but good enough for a reference. Personally, I am just so excited for Monza this weekend. Monza is a track that it doesn't always create the best race just due to the current Formula One cars inconsistency, but with the atmosphere of the Tifosi and we haven't had them back in two years, it'll be amazing to see. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.